on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. There's a new um uh, a new uh, um like a the thinking game. Uh, oh oh uh, god! Uh, uh, it's like um, Brain Age. Brain Age. Gee. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including a new brain training game coming uh, to the Nintendo Switch. And then on Thursday, we're going to be talking about autumn games. But in the meantime, Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. I have a confession to make, a small confession. Please. So, um, I look, I use a lot of chapstick. Not like an inordinate amount but i use chapstick you're right okay yes i this is you're saying like uh, the, habitually you use yeah, a lot of chapstick uh-huh, okay yeah. this is not you are not confessing to a single time of using way too much chapstick right yeah Got exactly it. okay so i applied chapstick before we began yes um and then i took a drink of water yeah so now there's like my lips mm. are on the glass. I feel like a femme fatale is basically what I'm saying. Right. So I feel well, you did waltz in here wearing a cocktail dress. <laughs> and I wasn't going to say anything. No, because you're too. Because <laughs> one, your jaw hit the floor because I looked amazing. Stunning. And two, you're too polite. I am so polite. How polite am I? I'm so polite that I am letting you borrow my copy of Sonic Forces for as long as you want it uh i've gotten there's been uh some new activity around uh sonic forces people emailing saying that they would like to borrow it and you listener will get your chance you don't want to be left out no there is always and i hope it never comes to this but there is always the chance that this borrowing program will end yes and you don't want to you don't want that feeling of missing out no you look fomo is real fear of missing out if you're experiencing it because you have not yet put yourself on the list to borrow my copy of Sonic Forces, uh, you can rectify that easily by emailing us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. <laughs> and just giving us a mailing address where we can send this thing, and then you play it, and then you send it back. It's great. We love it. Mark, what else do we like? Super Mario Maker 2 levels. Yes. We love them. We love when you send them to us. You can tweet them at us. That's right. And we are at Nincart Society. Or the email address, as stated before, is Nintendo Cartridge Society <laughs> at gmail.com. Gmail. We'll play them. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about them on the show. We'll tweet them out with the show notes. We'll include them in the show notes. We yeah. actually won't tweet them out. We'll include them in the show notes. Right. You got to backpedal on that one a little bit. <laughs> we tweet out that there's a new episode. So right. anybody who looks at it will see your level codes. You understand. Look, where's the lie? <laughs> Where is the lie? Um, speaking of lies, uh, the new Ape at Betty single is out. You can find it now on apebetty.com or all of the places where you can get Ape at Betty stuff. He's at Ape at Betty Music on Twitter. Um, new single's great. It's called Fall on Your Sword. I really like it a lot. Mark, have you had an opportunity to check it out? Of course I have. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> um, he's great. Uh, we wouldn't have music without him. It would be a silent show. Yeah, we we would just... Mm-hmm. And don't get us wrong. We wouldn't skip the music. We would just sit there in silence we for need, the duration yes, of that's correct. what the theme music should be. We need that 28 seconds to focus. Um, and to fill episode length. Oh, just to just make it longer. Yes, exactly. Why do you think we talk about borrowing my copy of Sonic Forces every episode? It's because it's fun. I don't want that thing in my house. Um, here's something that we are doing. We are, we are starting. This is something new. A new program where we are going to determine the best Nintendo music. Yeah, the specifically the best Nintendo song we've determined. The best piece of music. The best yes. piece, right, yeah. it's not a song. It's a piece of music. I'm so strangely it could be a song. Song technically means it has a, a singing component. Mm-hmm. Um but so we are we are going to determine the best piece of Nintendo music and we need listener, guess what? We need you to help us with this. So we're going to do it big like bracket style, right? Um and we need we are only going to put as entries in this contest suggestions that we get from you. We're not going to offer any of our own favorites. 
which hurts me a little bit because I feel like I'm not going to get that Hytopia theme from Triforce Heroes in there. <laughs> but maybe I will. Who knows? Yeah, that's why we need listeners to come through and fill this bracket for us. How big could the bracket go? It depends on how many songs we get. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. So if you just want to email us the names and or uh, you know like links to YouTube, that would be uh, helpful. Videos that's probably that's probably the best. Um, and just email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com or get us on Twitter at Nincart Society. Um, we're giving you a lot of time. We need this before November twenty second. But don't think that because you have a long lead time that you should wait until yeah. the very end. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'll get around to it later. I mean, obviously, I'll get around to it later. You can spend some time gathering your thoughts if you That's need right. to. But That's if you right. have some right off the top of your head, send them to us. Because here's the thing: you can submit as many as you want, but have it be noted that we won't necessarily use all of your suggestions. That's right. So try to put them in some sort of priority order. Right. I mean, no one should be sending us all the music in super mario galaxy right 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 um some of the music in super mario galaxy sure but like pick ones that you think are are good you know entrance for for this contest and then we'll uh we'll determine uh we'll match them up one by one and decide which is the best yeah so another reason to look uh look forward to thanksgiving again send them to us before november 22nd and thank you to jessica who tweeted a, at us this idea for an episode i hope we're um, doing it justice. Yeah. I, uh, I think we are. Yeah, especially because it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet, and that it took us a real long time to explain the rules. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to tighten this up. up. We'll, we'll tighten it up for up. the next one. We'll tighten it up. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's get into what we've been playing this week. Came in a little tardy. It, by that, I mean it took me a full week. <laughs> But I finally beat uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I mean, I think this is fair, that it took you more than the two days it took me to beat it, right? I mean, that's okay. You can't feel bad about it, Mark. <laughs> well, I mean, I do, but thank you. Uh, I loved it. I, I think it's so much fun. That, um, that being said, the last oh, two dungeons... <laughs> criticism. Yeah, exactly. The last two dungeons... I'd forgotten how much I did not enjoy those. Uh, yeah, they're both a little obtuse. So, uh, yeah, I'd... it's like the face dungeon mm-hmm. and then uh, like the bird dungeon, feather dungeon, whatever. Yeah, there's like a tower on like the, the right side of, of the mountain range. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're both, um, you know, you just spend like kind of a lot of time running around them being like, I'm going to stumble on the thing that makes this work at some point. That's how I felt. It, so it wasn't even those two dungeons, but the um, the key dungeon i spent a lot of time just like stumbling around yeah until i would until because i obviously did not go in like the prescribed order so there were times where i was like i don't have a key but clearly need a key right i don't know where i'm supposed to get a key so let me just kind of wander around for a while did you have the compass at that point i did well uh i eventually got the compass which obviously is a huge help because it chimes yeah when you're in a room with a key but uh, such a beautiful game. I think there was something, we talked very briefly about this, but the um, the way, I, the ending of this game is really beautiful. Yes. And I think it's pretty close, if not exact, like dialogue-wise to what's in the Game Boy game. Totally. But seeing it rendered um, fully and just like with the music and just experiencing it in general, like I found it really moving. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, I wonder if uh, there would be any value in us doing a like spoiler cast about uh, the end of this game. I feel like it's maybe not enough to fill like a whole episode for us, um, but there's enough in the way the second half of this game uh, like plays out and the actual end of it that I feel like is worth um, discussing. And I've seen like a few articles pop up um, online, which almost seem to misunderstand the ending. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, I, it is, it is beautiful. And like at, at the very end of it, um, just the, the music is great and the writing is very like concise and sad, um, but also hopeful. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really loved this game. I also played some Untitled Goose Game. Tell me about your experience with the Untitled Goose Game. Taking the internet by storm, I thought it was fine. Uh, I liked the idea of it more than I actually enjoyed playing it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I I thought it was fun. And I actually think the joy in it would be probably if I let myself be a little crazier. Because you're given this like to-do list in each 
area that you stumble into. And so it it's all about uh wrecking havoc. Mm-hmm. Um but being I being a goose. But I think that uh the more creative you are with ways to solve the puzzles, the more fun you're going to have. Like things like trapping or you know like make a kid wear the wrong glasses and you're like, "Okay, how can I do that?" And I found a way to do it, but wandering Did around Did you go to optometry m- school? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. I played the long con. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, which is not as fun, right? Because right. it's, it's six real time years <laughs> of getting your degree, and it's tough to do all those tests as a goose because you don't have hands, right? Can't speak English. Mm-mm. It's tough. But uh, l- you know, looking at the map, it was like, oh, actually, it probably would have been really funny if I had t- taken him over there to do like whatever, yeah. instead of doing it where I did. So I, I, on the one hand, I'm kind of, you know, wasn't bowled over by it, but I also feel like. There could be a lot there. Yeah. Um, it's also just, it's fun to be in this moment where, like, everyone is talking about the Untitled Goose Game. Totally. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird little, like, flash in the pan that, like, people are just paying attention to it and, like, want to talk about it. It's fun. Um, we've also been playing some uh, Mario Kart Tour on the iPhone. Uh, how, do, how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel about this game, Mark? Okay, so I have not really liked... Nintendo's mobile games that much like you know I liked Mario Run I guess that's not true I always when we talk yeah. about them I'm like yeah it was fine it was fun Super Mario Run was fun but I never continued to come back to them I am impressed with uh Mario Kart Tour to me it's like look I don't understand the controls I don't really know what I'm doing uh I have I got like the worst luck in pulling drivers uh-huh um it's like baby peach what am I supposed to do with this but you're supposed to go real fast is what you're supposed to do, Mark. <laughs> oh, I forgot I was talking to the world's only Baby Peach apologist. First of all, I prefer Baby Daisy. <laughs> um, but, but I've actually been... It's Mario Kart on the phone. And it's levels like I never played Mario Kart 7, the 3DS one. Yeah. And I know it doesn't have a great reputation for the tracks and the music and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I'm finding it difficult to complain. Um, I, I would say the the thing that uh, I com- would complain about, I, my, my complaints with it are, are twofold. Um, one is that I find it frustrating to play a Mario Kart game and feel like I have such little control over... The controls are insane. I do not understand the controls. Yeah, like it just, I'm just swiping left and right, uh, and I'm, I'm using the, uh, the skidding mode, the, the, like, the recommended um, steering mode. Yeah, so basically, just real fast, if yeah. you haven't played it yet, there's two ways that you control this game. And one is um, you like actually, this is the one they do not recommend. It's not the default setting. Is there's no like power sliding. Yeah. You are just more in control of the character of the, of the cart. Right. Because when you're power sliding, what you need to do a lot is like start the slide before you're turning and then like kind of like skid back and forth to like kind of right the angle and yeah then like using go. your thumb or finger yeah, oh, okay, yeah like kind of in the same way that you would if you're doing the power slide in in, in mario kart normally. but in that mode it's like auto driving for you basically is it is that what's happening it's auto steering or accelerating and like it's definitely auto accelerating and yeah. in the settings there's like you can turn on or off how strong like the power assisted steering is but i don't think you can disable that entirely okay so it's it's all of this that where like i just want to have absolute control over the way the cart steers uh and currently i do not and that bugs me i know that i could spend more time with it and like be better with that but at present i'm not there um and then also the the way that the uh like the monetization in the game works uh, is bothersome to me too because like i want to play as other racers um but i don't want to spend any money on it and i don't really want to grind for like coins or rubies or whatever it is um to do all of that um and have you looked into the way that like you can get a you can subscribe to this game for 4.99 a month to get like unlimited gems or whatever no i i don't think it is unlimited gems so what a, what even is it that i think if you're like a gold gold member or like gold ticket member or whatever Uh you get like bonus things and you get like you can unlock mario as a racer immediately or like things like that games called super mario kart (laughs) but i but i don't he should be in the lineup from the get-go but i don't think that it's just like unlimited gems i think you still have to you might get more gems on a monthly basis but then if you you either have to earn them or 
you would have to pay for them. This is definitely the the most nakedly monetized yeah. Nintendo mobile game. Like, those gems are expensive, and they are stingy with coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, that's that's the part of it that makes me, I mean, beyond the fact that I can't really control it the way I want to, <laughs> um, and that it wants money from me in ways that I'm not really comfortable with, that, like, I played it for a little bit, and then I was like, I've got Mario Kart right here on my Switch. Why don't I just play that for a little bit? And I did, and I had a great time. Yeah, it's, I, it's a mixed bag, for sure. I completely understand that. I... For me, just being able to play like um, a quick mm-hmm. Mario Kart round on my phone, I'm finding really enjoyable. Yeah, just like when I'm bored and don't want to like get the switch out or something. Yeah, but yeah. I definitely don't think it's an amazing experience. Yeah, sure. well, uh, 10 million people downloaded it, so <laughs> Pe- people are into it. If only more people were into Secret of Evermore. Okay, so look, uh, Mark came over yesterday, and we I, I got out the Super NT so we could play some Super Nintendo games, um, and among them was the Secret of Evermore, the 1994? Two, I think we determined. No, that was Super Star Wars. That was Super alert. Star Wars, that's right. Um, 1995, I'm going to say. Yeah, so this was a game made by Square Enix, uh, or like the... Uh, I guess it was just Square at that time, and it was the American branch of Square, um, a game that never came out in Japan and is a very, like, Secret of Mana-like. Um, so we started at the beginning of the game uh, and played for maybe 45 minutes or so when the game did a weird soft reset on us. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, I can Mark, I can give you kind of like a tour of this game, checking out the other um, save files on here. And luckily, I had save files from, like, uh, you know, a quarter of the way through the game, half the way through the game, and one right at the end. So we saw kind of a lot of the game. Um, and it's such a weird... It's just such a weird game. It's such like a weird one to revisit because it feels sometimes very, very slow, mm-hmm. um, but very atmospheric and cool at the same time. Yeah, I think it is, especially at the beginning, the parts I was playing, it is very, it felt very methodical. Yeah. Because you're not like overpowered by any means. You're still kind of figuring out the game, the music, even just like the atmosphere of the levels really gives you a sense of, you know, there, there's no urgency. There's it's an action game, but doesn't feel like heart pounding. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it maybe only kind of looks like an action game. And in reality is like a, a turn based role playing game where you're also running around because like when you swing and you're not at 100 um, percent, it you may as well not even be like you'll deal zero damage yeah that's true um so like yeah i mean it's it it is really just a like you say a a more methodical game and like the characters don't really seem to be taking it seriously either um like the story is about a kid who gets sucked into like a fantasy world and the whole time he's just like comparing it to like sci-fi movies and stuff right he's like hopping through time it's a very like Western, like American kid oh, yeah. with a dog. I mean, in that way, it reminded me a lot of Zoda's Revenge, yes. Star Tropics too. Mm-hmm. But I had never played it before, and it was really cool because it's like a Western sequel to um, Secret of Mana, and it plays very much like that. It was really interesting to see that sort of taken out of a fantasy setting and put into a like early '90s kind of aesthetic uh speaking of an early 90s kind of aesthetic we also played a little bit of super star wars for the super nintendo uh, although we were playing the version that was ported over to the playstation 4 um which had some nice like difficulty settings that we could tone things down and mess with like screen settings uh that game's bad (laughs) it's so hard i remember playing those first like three levels of the game Mm -hmm. a ton but never made it past that um and I, I I why were we even doing this like just because we were like talking about Star Wars? Well, because on the Super NT there's oh, yes. uh Turrican the director's cut and then Super Turrican two yes. are just like included on there and you played a little bit of Super Turrican two and I was just saying like oh this game reminds me so much of a lot of games I rented as a kid where I would get through the first level because it was pretty easy and then the second level they just like ramp up the difficulty to insane right. levels and you never get past it never get kind past of the like level. Super Star Wars yes which is what what was true to our experience of it um uh, on Sunday finally I've been making my way through Fire Emblem Three Houses bit by bit not much to say about it other than I've promised myself i'm at least going to get the t- to the time skip 
before I dive into Dragon Quest XI S, which I did pick up. Uh, very funny. I thought you were saying uh, I will at least get to the time skip before I die. <laughs> End of sentence is what I assumed. Um, All right, so that's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Kind of a quiet week for new releases, so... Hey, thank goodness, right? Yeah, going to be able to maybe actually make it to the time skip in Fire Emblem Three Houses before I die. Uh, Because not much I'm looking to pick up this week. Really, the only thing I want to call out is that on October 4th, Ghostbusters, the video game remastered, is released for Switch. Uh, it's so weird that they're re-releasing this game. It, it, it seems like there's nothing. It's just because it's like October. Yeah, and uh, a couple of years too late from the reboot. Yeah, and one year too early from the next reboot. Yeah. So, but I guess you know, Ghostbusters is evergreen to it, people it's a, of a it's certain a age. Perennial. There is a uh, uh, a. Ghostbusters Transformers crossover comic being published by IDW right now. The Ecto One is a Transformer. <laughs> like that's yeah, that's uh, fun. That, that's fun. I'm into that. It's cute. Um, here, another thing that is happening right now is not necessarily a new release, but Square Enix does have a sale going on on the eShop, and a lot of games, a lot of their games are like thirty-ish uh, percent off. Um, so you know, like the collection of mana is in there. It normally goes for forty bucks. Is uh, twenty six seventy nine. Uh, Final Fantasy nine is fifteen bucks instead of twenty one. Um, Final Fantasy 7 is 11 instead of 16. So, like, check that out if you're interested in any of those uh, games. I know that uh, the Final Fantasy remakes and remasters and re-releases are all on, like, my list of games to pick up eventually. Uh, so I, th- I don't know what, but I'm going to pick up something on this list uh, this week. And you have until October 13th. And then they're no good anymore. You can't use the sale after that. Mark, is there anything on there you uh, that is of interest to you? Ooh, I'm kind of tempted by F- Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, for thirty bucks instead of fifty. Yeah. Um, I really love Final Fantasy XII, but again, before I die, I have to play Fire Emblem Three Houses, and then Dragon Quest XI S is just teed up right yeah, there for after you die. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, let's get out of the new releases. It is time for a regular segment on our show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, where a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Uh, and today, we're, we've got a Joker movie-related topic. Um, Joker's coming out on Friday. It's a movie. It's got uh, people in it, like well-known people. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix and uh, De Niro, right? So basically what we're doing yes. is we're gonna we're saying if you were to make a Joker-esque, yeah. right, like a uh, villain-focused movie for other villains. Right. And let's, let's... Who would you do it for? Let's keep the same, like, criteria that it has to be, like, a prestige drama. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Yeah. So, like, a really gritty, grounded uh-huh. uh, prestige drama directed by someone previously best known for a gross-out comedy. Sure, okay. Um, <laughs> We're getting so, really specific. So can we do, like, Adam McKay? Like, because <laughs> like, he, he's made now, you know, like, right, the big short Right, yeah, totally. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. then I want my Gorilla Grodd Adam McKay movie. <laughs> grounded <laughs> uh but i mean Gor- gorilla grod would be really funny yeah to see someone try to like when's the last time uh, a gorilla was the main character in a movie uh the planet of the apes films uh good point i uh, mean technically also, also not a gorilla <laughs> rampage has a gorilla in oh it, yeah mm-hmm. um but that movie's terrible um but no see i i think you could do a very similar thing the, I mean, basically, actually, maybe the most recent Planet of the Apes movies is just what a Gorilla Grodd mo- movie would be. Uh, sure. What? What? Are you, there, there's a siren happening in, in the background of uh, of the four thirty three. Four thirty three. So you don't pull your car over that <laughs> for, that uh, that wasn't on your side, right? Unless it was, in which case, do. I mean, great. This is this is very good. <laughs> okay. Um. How about... Let's get away from gorillas. Let's Poison see. Ivy. Okay, Poison Ivy. Great. Yeah. I would because, love to see a Poison Ivy movie. Because you could totally do a Poison Ivy movie that has zero relationship to Batman. 
Yeah. You like you wouldn't need it. No. Poison Ivy's cool by herself. Poison Ivy's cool by herself, and like she can take on, uh, you know, like greedy corporations who are doing whatever kind of polluting, and then like you can just be on her side, right? Um, yeah, and not have to like worry about what that means. To, like, yeah, she's probably killing people too. And she'll get labeled as Antifa or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I would watch that. That's a good one. Do you think there's uh, any possibility for like a Lex Luthor movie? Or is it just to like no one? What like he's just his super villain power is that he's rich, right? Because I, I feel like part of the reason that a Joker movie is maybe appealing to people is because Joker doesn't really have a defined backstory. Yeah, and not that Lex Luthor has like one that's set in stone, but he's just kind of like a rich, smart guy. Yeah, you know, like I don't really need to know right i'm not gonna like find out what elon musk's life story <laughs> is why would i want to find out lex luther's <laughs> right um yeah. so sinestro let's go green lantern here baby mm-hmm. um i would like to see a green a, a uh sinestro movie that traces his like from being a heroic green lantern to like turning on the lanterns and like becoming uh, the yellow lantern yeah like that would be cool yeah, that could become like a whole trilogy. Yeah. Of just like Sinestro kind of like anti hero. Yeah, Sinestro well, Sinestro hero, Sinestro anti hero, Sinestro villain. Yes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um we're sticking pretty hard here in the uh like D C universe. Um, is there a Marvel villain that you would want to see? No, there's not, but I'll tell you. Not even Magneto? Uh, not Magneto. <laughs> Did, didn't they try to make this movie for a long time, like a Magneto-focused movie? I think they did. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know that I – I'm kind of – I feel burned out on X-Men films. Oh, okay, sure. I don't really feel like I need any more. Um, so, skipping past Marvel, because I can't think of one there off the go. top of my head. Shredder. I would love oh, yes. a Shredder movie. Let's How did get... Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mm-hmm. become Shredder? I think that's a great story. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he was a stand-up, a failed stand-up comedian. That's right, who ran into some ooze <laughs> and got mutated with a paper Shredder. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, what about, like, a... Uh, um, I was going to go back to Ghostbusters, but now I'm like, who's the bad guy in that? <laughs> oh, well, I guess we'll never know. Uh, we were accompanied today by the Royal Center School of Speech and Drama as conducted by Paul Barker. Um, and I just wanted to uh, ha- leave a little note here. I found a recording of 433 by a group called Leibach, Um, And it's a, a collection of mute artists. And they perform the piece by the four of them sitting around a chessboard for three and a half minutes. Uh, and it's three men and one woman. And the woman is just sitting there naked. There's no audience, though, so there's no applause, so we couldn't use it, and they're cowards. All right, Mark, let's get into the news. Hey, Nintendo has announced a new entry in the Brain Training series. It's coming to Japan later this year. Yay! (laughs) Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training or Brain Age series was super popular on the Nintendo DS. Did you ever play... Brain Training or Brain Age, one of like, I think they released like three of them on the DS. Oh, yeah. No, I, I had uh, Brain Age on, on the DS. I loved that. Yeah, me too. And I feel like uh, that sort of mini game, like micro dosing for really All reaching right, for yeah. a better term. <laughs> <laughs> of um no but you're right though that like, like those like brain game games it's like something that you check in with like every day and just do like a little bit right and these. it's become super popular i mean i'm sure if you listen to any podcast you've heard people talking about like luminosity or whatever yeah. and th- that's basically what these brain training games were for some reason and maybe it was just because i was like so tuned into my ds but i've never been super into mobile gaming that I really glommed onto it when it was on the DS. Yeah, me too. And right now, this is only announced for Japan, coming out on December 27th. Um, it doesn't seem like we're going to get it outside of Japan, but it, which is a little bit of a bummer. I totally would have picked this up. Yeah, me too. I wonder if, like, it's... Because it, it all just has to be, like... The localization for one of those has to be pretty tough, right? That you would have to kind of do all of it from, from the ground up. Sure. A lot of text and, like, also, you know... Like a lot of the puzzles are like now, you know, say just the uh, color of the word that's printed here and it'll be like the word green, but it it is written in red lettering. Right. And like all of that 
you know, they just change it entirely. Yeah, I also think that, you know, they released a brain training game for the 3DS in the West. And I also, th- I, I, I don't think it did that well. I think basically Western tastes have shifted to using mobile phones for this type of stuff. Yeah. So I just don't know that the market is there like it was for the DS. Um, And it is interesting. And I think we've brought it up before when we've like hypothesized about like what kinds of games Nintendo could be bringing to uh, iPhones and Android. And, you know, it is weird. that They've never done one. Right. Never done a brain age for phones um, because it seems like it'd be a perfect fit. Yeah, totally. Um, Interestingly, so... If you've never played the Brain Age games before, they are just like little brain teasers. And then after you've done, my memory is after you've done like a, a number of them, it kind of says, or maybe it's game by game, it basically gives you a Brain Age. It's like, oh, your performance was equal to somebody who was like 24 years old. Yeah. Or something like that. Which is a good score. It always wants you to be, it wants you to have a younger brain. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and you would do that using the stylus, and there would be, like, puzzles to solve or, like, little Sudoku or things like that. So this game doesn't seem like it'll be played on the TV. It seems like you will have to take your Switch, turn it vertically, and the physical version of this game in Japan is going to come with an official Nintendo stylus. Oh, we're never going to get stylus, one of those. Which I think is the first time. Um, it'll also be sold separately, but the first time that they've released, like, an official one. And well, excluding the Mario Maker one that was released in Europe. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. And then um, it also that also means that there's going to be six mini games that are not compatible with the Nintendo Switch Lite for whatever reason. Maybe because it requires mm. the IR reader, on sure, or the or, Joy-Con or something like that. Yeah, and maybe like the HD Rumble because there's no Rumble in mm, Switch Lite mm-hmm. either. So the new features include two-player versus mode. Uh, Joy-Con IR functionality, like playing rock, paper, scissors, so that would exclude the Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, the home button on the Switch will light up to remind you to train. Cool. Which is like a weird thing that has been in the Switch forever, and they've just never utilized. That like it can just quietly wake up just that little button to be yeah. like, I have news for <laughs> you. And then uh, online competitions. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty cool package. Kind of wish it was coming over here, but um, it's it's neat to see that it's using all of the like extra um functions of the switch. Uh, you know, you mentioned that the DS one used the touch, like that you did a lot of like writing with the stylus. Um, but there were there were also games where like you spoke to it as well, and it picked you up on the microphone. So like they were using all of the different ways that you could interact with the DS. It's just cool to see them doing that here. Third party controller 8 BitDo has announced a pair of controllers intended to be used with the with the Nintendo Switch Lite. It's called the 8 BitDo Lite. Mhm. Controllers come in either yellow or turquoise matching the Switch Lite colors. And it has two D-pads and no thumbsticks? Yeah, have you seen these things? No. So, uh they look they look exactly like they're exactly the same like color and finish as uh the Switch Lights, um but instead of having um two thumbsticks there are two d-pads so a d-pad on the left and a d-pad on the right which i think is supposed to be like a reference to the fact that there is a d-pad on the switch light but the those are like the directional buttons on the like left joy con and those on these controllers are back to being buttons so now the there are two d-pads but it, they're in place of inputs that aren't d-pads Am I, am I making sense? Yeah, I just, I don't. <laughs> this is I, very strange. I, I guess I don't really understand the utility yeah. of this. I'm not really sure either. I mean, uh, other than, uh, well, yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's a good question. Cause like, if you're going to play with the second player uh, on this, it's going to be weird because there's no like kickstand for the Switch Lite. It'll be like one person holding the machine and the other person using the Switch Lite controller, which will match which I guess is nice. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, it's, it seems kind of like limited application here. Well, if you want to buy them and figure out what the use of it is, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to be $24.99 and aiming for release by the end of October. So there you go. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 DLC Pack 1 is now available. It's uh, Marvel Knights focused. Uh, knights like Knights in Shining Armor. Mm-hmm. Cur- Marvel Knights Curse of the Vampire includes a new story scenario. Plus new characters, the uh, previously announced Punisher, Blade, 
Moon Knight, which, hey, Patrick, by the way, I don't know that we've talked about this. What? But uh, Moon Knight is getting a Disney Plus streaming series. Crazy. I still can't wait to see what these streaming series actually are. It feels like they're going to be as meaningful as movies. Right. But, like, uh, we've not had one of them yet, so we can't know. We can only hope. But Moon Knight, Patrick. I love Moon Knight. Um, and Morbius, which, whatever. The Living Vampire. Plus a new challenge in... Oh, plus a bunch of new challenges in Gauntlet mode. Also, even if you didn't purchase the DLC, there are new free costumes for characters. Captain America gets a super soldier, soldier costume. Black Panther gets a thrice-blessed armor. Normally that armor is only double-blessed. <laughs> Iron, like a double-blessed suit. Oh, to go with a, there you go. Yeah, thank you. That was better than my joke. Uh, also, I want to just loop back around to the Captain America uh, costume. Is he not normally a super soldier? <laughs> I guess maybe he's not, like, dressing as one. Mm, Do you it. know what I mean? Like, he's not, what he's wearing doesn't scream super soldier in the way that this particular outfit does. Yeah, I get you. Uh, Iron Man is wearing his extremist armor, and then Thor's is just called Ultimate. So he's just, like, Ultimate Thor? Uh, presumably. So that's, like, because uh, Ultimate Thor, his Mjolnir, uh, like, has the axe blade on it i believe so it looks more like in uh the movies Mm -hmm. uh like endgame and the one before that infinity war thank you uh hey the new pokemon anime series has been announced oh okay it's going to be called pokemon monsters in japan and debuts november 17th there Uh, we don't seem to have like an english title yet Sure. All the new stories you don't think I read go were with just monsters? like new Pokemon anime. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about the like big Pokemon anime news on this show. Um, that in the most recent cartoon, Ash like won the Pokemon championship. Oh yeah, finally. Um, which because I mean, have you ever been like a follower of of the anime? Not really. Yeah, me neither. Um, and also I'm a little bit like, come on, man, why why couldn't he win? Huh? Like 20 whatever years? Well, I mean, how do, where do you go? I mean, where do you go from winning? I guess we're about to find out. But where do yeah. you go from winning? It's like a TV series where the central focus of it is, you know, like two people who you want to be in a relationship, but they're not in a relationship. And then finally, like around the fourth season. And yes, I'm talking specifically about, about the office. Girls. Oh, <laughs> they, everybody does it around the fourth season. You're like, how much long can we drag this out? Yeah, you they can't. get together. Yeah. And then the next season, they... You like enjoy it, but then the writers have to figure out some way to ruin it because that's right, right, right. I mean, you can go the opposite route too. I guess this is an opposite, but just like lean into it. You know, you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain, right? And now Ash becomes like <laughs> the gym leader that like the new hero has to beat. Like, I'd say that's the way to go, just like my Sinestro series of movies. That would be amazing. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Great. Seems like uh, Ash is joined by a new trainer named Go. Maybe G O U, mm-hmm. who has a score bunny. Yeah. Um. Go's goal is to obtain a Mew, and of course, course catch as many Pokemon as possible. Maybe all of them. Uh. Looks like the Galar region will be featured, but it also looks like they're going to be traveling to a bunch of different regions. Mm. So not just one. It's not like the previous anime where my understanding is they were just all in like the Alola region. Uh, they were also frustrated by the lack of national decks. So <laughs> they're going to travel to the other regions. Um, and yeah, so I think we'll l- be learning more in the weeks and months ahead. The game doesn't come out until November. And so we probably won't learn too much more. Right. Because there's probably like game related spoilers in there. Uh, my only question for you here is, are you relieved that Go does not have a Sobble? Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. Can you imagine how insufferable this show would be Ugh. if one of the main characters was a Sobble? Not on my watch. Not on mine either. Uh, do you want to take this next one? Sure. So uh, Ryo Nagamatsu, one of the composers on, Link's Awa- on the Link's Awakening remake, um, shared some insights into the arrangement process uh, for music in a blog post last week. Um, so he, he mentioned that uh, modern Zelda games you tend to use a, a full orchestra, um, but they opted for a smaller chamber arrangement in uh, Link's Awakening because the game, the scope of the game is so much smaller and so much more compact. Something you had mentioned last week, right? Yes, correct. Um, and something that I was texting about with uh, our friend Greg Smith. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's cool to see uh, the composer sort of acknowledge um, 
yeah, normally we will do big orchestral tracks, but for these we went for, you know, a little bit of a, a different um, arrangement. Um, and he shared some, like, early arrangements of some pieces of music. I thought we could listen to some of it, if that's cool with you, Mark. Um, so first he shared a, a main theme that was just arranged for brass. Um, and this isn't actually uh, being performed by brass here. I think it's uh, all, all MIDI brass sounds, but it sounds pretty good. Um, and so let's just uh, have a listen here. It's like so, the Oktoberfest version. It, it does sound a little Oktoberfesty. Um, so he, he mentioned that you know it's the brass makes it feel a little like epic. So it sounds like Zelda, but it's maybe not unusual enough um, for uh, for for this game, which is you know a, a notably weird game. Um, and so what they eventually end up going with um, is this one. Uh, and just like listen to how it's uh, scored with mostly woodwinds and like little hits of percussion um, here and there instead of brass. So like a little bassoon, some like uh, clarinets and it, like wind chimes. It really does fit the game perfectly, though. Yeah, like it, it feels more like islandy, and also just like feels more just like unusual and strange. Um, so uh, he also shared um, another uh, like stab at when they were like really trying to like be weird um, and maybe went too far in that direction. So Mark, please behold um, uh, a, a too weird version of that track. <laughs> Amazing, right? <laughs> it sounds like something that'd be in a rhythm has been in mini game. <laughs> I love uh, that. It's it's chaos. <laughs> um yeah, let's get rid of that. Um which it's it's so funny that like yeah, like you want it to be weird, but like if it gets too weird, your brain's like, nope, I reject this. Uh, and just hearing those like little laws is really funny. Um, so Nagamatsu also noted that there are some areas in the game that actually use um, the like original source music from the Game Boy in their arrangements. So it's never just like lifting the music directly. Um, but he ref <coughs> excuse me, he references the Tall Tall Mountain Range and some of the dungeon themes as sampling the music from the original Game Boy. Um, and so I went into the, uh, the Tall Tall Mountains music, Mountain Range music, uh, listening for it, and it's in there. Um, it's about, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to start it up and then, uh, like, skip a little bit in so that we can hear uh, where it starts. Um, but it's really a cool effect. So this is the Tall Tall Mountains music. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. I turned down a sec. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here and then listen to like the uh, the eighth notes in the background that are sort of like making up the texture and the old it's Game Boy sounds. You hear it? Yeah, that's really cool. And so they evidently do that with some of the dungeon tracks as well, um, but I just wasn't able to to find any of them. That's really cool. I love how this game is, you know, kind of a minor release yeah. for Nintendo this year, but it's a Zelda game and it's still crafted with like so much love and imagination. Yeah. God, I really love this game. Yep, me too. Finally, Dragon Quest XI was released on Switch last week, and it's been a long time coming for Switch owners. This was a game that we knew was coming to Switch back when it was known as NX, before oh, yeah. we knew anything about the Switch at all, Dragon Quest XI had been announced for it, which seemed weird at the time, especially because, you know, once it was revealed and it was coming for the 3DS and for the PS4, there was kind of this feeling of like, 
when is it coming to Switch? Why is it taking so long? And what version of the game is that going to be? Right, and like, yeah. why was it announced so early and it's coming so late? But we got a little bit background on this, which I d- didn't know before. Um, in a live stream promoting the Western release last week, the game's developers revealed that beloved late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata had requested specifically for the game to appear on the platform. So they were saying that the developers, or they were saying that they've now delivered on their promise to Iwata, which I thought was so sweet. That's sweet. Uh, the The phrasing they've delivered on their promise is a little bit threatening. <laughs> Um, but I also think it's weird uh, that because was it just last week or maybe the week before we were talking about um, uh, uh, about Smash Brothers also that uh, completing it was a request for by Iwata. So like how much of the switches well, like what the switch is and what they've delivered uh, for the system, which has all been great, have all been like the dying wishes of Satoru Iwata. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, but all these games have been so good. I know. <laughs> they clearly felt some sort of pressure to uh, deliver, which I can understand. Well, I guess uh, whatever it takes, right? I guess. Whatever that, it takes. Is that the That's lesson? That's the lesson. Or... The lesson is whatever it takes. Okay, all right. All right, let's get out of the news. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you can share it on wherever you share things. But Facebook and Twitter help us. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nin Cart Society. The Facebook page is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening. Hey guys, I'm Stevie Nelson. And I'm Dave Horowitz. And we're the hosts of I Burn Everything. It's a podcast about food and relationships, which, you know, if we're being honest, are two out of the three things people want to talk about anyway. What's the third thing? Netflix. Okay. We'd like you to rate, review, and subscribe if you like it. Anywhere you listen to your podcast, Apple, iPod. Stitcher. Do you still have iPods? (laughs) (laughs) If you have an iPod, do it on an iPod. I don't know. If you have a Zune, do it on your it's Zune. probably hard to even charge them now. Yeah, good luck. And if you have a Tamagotchi, you can't do any of this. Yeah, you can't stream audio on a Tamagotchi, but you you can feed them. Yeah, you still so keep feed feeding those it. little buggers. They're hungry. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Campfire. <laughs>